Interactive Design Pipeline enables anyone to create their own customized robotic hand with an easy-to-use 3D interface. MIT researchers have created an interactive design pipeline that streamlines and simplifies the process of crafting a customized robotic hand with tactile sensors. Typically, a robotics expert may spend months manually designing a custom manipulator, largely through trial and error. Each iteration could require new parts that must be designed and tested from scratch. By contrast, this new pipeline doesn't require any manual assembly or specialized knowledge. Akin to building with digital Legos, a designer uses the interface to construct a robotic manipulator from a set of modular components that are guaranteed to be manufacturable. The user can adjust the palm and fingers of the robotic hand, tailoring it to a specific task, and then easily integrate tactile sensors into the final design. Once the design is finished, the software automatically generates 3D printing and machine knitting files for manufacturing the manipulator. Tactile sensors are incorporated through a knitted glove that fits snugly over the robotic hand. These sensors enable the manipulator to perform complex tasks, such as picking up delicate items or using tools. Rather than spending months or years working on a single design and putting a lot of money into prototypes, now anyone can produce a working prototype within minutes. The pipeline concept revolves around modularity, where users can mix and match components with flexibility, but won't be overwhelmed by the choices. The pipeline was designed around component functions rather than shapes, with about 15 parts that could be combined to make trillions of unique manipulators. The researchers then focused on building an intuitive interface in which the user mixes and matches components in a 3D design space. A set of production rules, known as graph grammar, control how users can combine pieces based on the way each component, such as a joint or finger shaft, fits together. If you think of this like a Lego kit where you have different building blocks that you can put together, then the grammar might be something like red blocks can only go on top of blue blocks, and blue blocks can only go on top of green blocks. Graph grammar is what ensures that each and every design is valid, meaning it makes physical sense and you can actually manufacture it. Once the user has created the manipulator structure, they can deform components to customize it for a specific task. For instance, perhaps the manipulator needs fingers with slimmer tips to handle office scissors or curved fingers that can grasp bottles. During this deformation stage, the software surrounds each component with a digital cage. Users stretch or bend components by dragging the corners of each cage. The system automatically constrains those movements to ensure the pieces still connect properly and the finished design remains manufacturable. After customization, the user identifies locations for tactile sensors. These sensors are integrated into a knitted glove that fits securely around the 3D printed robotic manipulator. The glove is comprised of two fabric layers, one that contains horizontal piezoelectric fibers and another with vertical fibers. Piezoelectric material produces an electric signal when squeezed. Tactile sensors are formed where the horizontal and vertical piezoelectric fibers intersect and then convert pressure stimuli into electric signals that can be measured. The gloves are used because they're easy to install, easy to replace, and easy to take off if there's a need to repair anything inside of them. Plus, with the gloves, the user can cover the entire hand with tactile sensors rather than embedding them in the palm or fingers, as is the case with other robotic manipulators. With the design interface complete, the researchers produce custom manipulators for four complex tasks, including picking up an egg, cutting paper with scissors, pouring water from a bottle, and screwing in a wing nut. The wing nut manipulator, for instance, had one lengthened and offset finger, which prevented the finger from colliding with the nut as it turned. That successful design required only two iterations. The egg grabbing manipulator never broke or dropped the egg during testing, and the paper cutting manipulator could use a wider range of scissors than any existing robotic hand they could find in the literature. But as they tested the manipulators, the researchers found that the sensors create a lot of noise due to the uneven weave of knitted fibers, which hampers their accuracy. They are now working on more reliable sensors that could improve manipulator performance. The researchers also want to explore the use of additional automation. Since the graph grammar rules are written in a way that a computer can understand, algorithms can search the design space to determine optimal configurations for a task-specific robotic hand. With autonomous manufacturing, the entire prototyping process could be done without human intervention. Now that there's a way for a computer to explore the design space, researchers can instead focus on answering the question of, is the human hand the optimal shape for doing everyday tasks? Maybe there is a better shape, maybe with fewer fingers or fingers pointing in different directions. This research doesn't fully answer that question, but it's a step in that direction. It provides a new way of thinking about robotic design in this new era where customization and versatility of robots are of high importance. Researchers have developed an AI trajectory planning system for autonomous vehicles in space that enables them to travel from a starting point to a target location safely, even when there are many different uncertainties in the environment, such as unknown variations in shapes, sizes, and locations of obstacles. 
It plots a safe trajectory to a targeted region even when the vehicle's starting point is not precisely known, and when it's unclear exactly how the vehicle will move due to environmental disturbances like wind, ocean currents, or rough terrain. This is the first technique to address the problems of trajectory planning with many simultaneous uncertainties and complex safety constraints. Future robotic space missions need risk-aware autonomy to explore remote and extreme worlds for which only highly uncertain prior knowledge exists. Instead of guessing the exact environmental conditions and locations of obstacles, the algorithm they develop reasons about the probability of observing different environmental conditions and obstacles at different locations. It would make these computations using a map or images of the environment using the robot's perception system. Using this approach, their algorithms formulate trajectory planning as a probabilistic optimization problem. This is a mathematical programming framework that allows the robot to achieve planning objectives, such as maximizing velocity or minimizing fuel consumption, while considering safety constraints, such as avoiding obstacles. The probabilistic algorithms they developed reason about risk, but because the problem involves different uncertain models and constraints, from the location and shape of each obstacle to the starting location and behavior of the robot, this probabilistic optimization is too complex to solve with standard methods. The researchers used higher order statistics and probability distributions of the uncertainties to convert that probabilistic optimization into a more straightforward, simpler deterministic optimization problem that could be solved efficiently with existing off-the-shelf solvers. The challenge was how to reduce the size of the optimization and consider more practical constraints to make it work. The optimization solver generates a risk-bounded trajectory, which means that if the robot follows the path, the probability it will collide with any obstacles is not greater than a certain threshold. From this, they obtain a sequence of control inputs that can steer the vehicle safely to its target region. They evaluated the technique using several simulated navigation scenarios. In one, they modeled an underwater vehicle charting a course from some uncertain position around a number of strangely shaped obstacles to a goal region. It was able to safely reach the goal at least 99% of the time. They also used it to map a safe trajectory of an aerial vehicle that avoided several 3D flying objects that have uncertain sizes and positions and could move over time, all while being in the presence of strong winds that affected its motion. Using their system, the aircraft reached its goal region with high probability. Depending on the complexity of the environment, the algorithms took between a few seconds and a few minutes to develop a safe trajectory. The researchers are now working on more efficient processes that would reduce the runtime significantly, which could allow them to get closer to real-time planning scenarios. The researchers are also developing feedback controllers to apply to the system, which would help the vehicle stick closer to its planned trajectory even if it deviates at times from the optimal course. The researchers are also working on a hardware implementation that would enable them to demonstrate their technique in a real robot. Artificial intelligence can now track the health of coral reefs by learning the song of the reef. Coral reefs have a complex soundscape, and even experts have to conduct painstaking analysis to measure reef health based on sound recordings. In a new study from the University of Exeter, scientists trained a computer algorithm using multiple recordings of healthy and degraded reefs, allowing the machine to learn the difference. The machine learning algorithm then analyzed a host of new recordings and successfully identified reef health 92% of the time. The team used this to track the progress of reef restoration projects. The researchers' findings show that a computer can pick up patterns that are undetectable to the human ear. It can tell them faster and more accurately how the reef is doing. The fish and other creatures living in the coral reefs make a vast range of sounds. The meaning of many of these calls remain unknown, but the new AI method can distinguish between the overall sounds of healthy and unhealthy reefs. The recordings used in the study were taken at the Mars Coral Reef Restoration Project, which is restoring heavily damaged reefs in Indonesia. Sound recorders and artificial intelligence could be used around the world to monitor the health of reefs and discover whether attempts to protect and restore them are working.